Hi. Hi, Leland. Okay, babies. I can hear you galloping ponies, but I can't see you galloping ponies. Where are you? There you are. Hey, ponios. How you doing? <laughs> right, come here, little deer sheep. Oh, dear. <laughs> I got a penny whistle. That's what I'm playing. Yeah, right, Leland. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. I am, however, I'm going to pick up my fleece. Hey, Donna. Hi, Eva. They cross between a deer and a sheep. Um, no, they are a very primitive breed of, uh, breed of sheep. They are from the Iron Age, and bizarrely, they've never changed. So I'm just going to sit myself down here. And, uh, yep, no sheep muck there. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit myself down here, see what happens. How are you doing, Dana and Eva? <sighs> so, the little white one is only part bred. He's half so, eh? And all of the others are pure so, eh? I think. <coughs> so, we managed, uh, my neighbour came over this evening and we caught them all. I wasn't planning on doing it today, but we did. We caught them all, had a look. Um, we've got two lambs, which are a few months old, and one's a boy, one's a girl. And the boy we've just banded, so he's now a weather, which means castrated. Um, the white one is a boy, a top. He's still got his bits. Um, he's the son of one of the adult females, but I don't know which one. Well, we think he is anyway. The one on the far left, at the back, he's only got one horn. Um, he's the we think he's the dad of most, except the white one. I unfortunately don't really have any information about them, so most of it is going off what we found out today when we caught them because you can check their teeth to find out their age and stuff. How you doing, Litlands? Wish I could show you how small they are, they're tiny. The adults, I think, are about the size of Jen, who's only, what, nine weeks old, ten weeks old? Um, they're what I guess in America you call hair sheep. Um, I don't have to shear them, they shed their own fur. Fluff, wool, whatever you want to call it. So I've been going around the field picking bits up because it's been falling off. So the white one is going to have to be separated shortly, as probably will the big top at the back because um, he is probably dad to everything in here that's two and under which means we don't want him breeding with his daughters 
this phone zooms in really well because I'm actually really, really quite far away. <laughs> You're right. This little paddock is long and thin, and it means I've got um, a pen set up at the end. <laughs> Getting eaten alive by midges here. Don't know if you'll be able to see them. See them? Scotland is full of midges. We actually have far less than uh, the west side of Scotland. So yeah, they um, they do look like deer in their face. Um, they behave like deer. They're very, very skittish. They're a very wild breed. And um, they come from the island of Soe, which is why they're called Soe sheep. But um, Soe is a Nordic word, I think coming from the Vikings actually, which means sheep island. So the sheep come from the island of sheep. <laughs> And then they were taken to St Kilda, which is no longer a habited island because it was awful. Life there was horrendous. Hey, Vaughan. They are adorable. Wish I could show you how tiny they are, but they're not friendly yet. <laughs> Give me a few weeks. Come on. Go run past. Come on. What happens when I start playing this penny whistle? Nope. <laughs> yes, it was me. So we have an older ewe and a gimmer ewe, so she's had one baby, we think. Uh, and then we've got two young ewe lamb, well one ewe lamb, one that was a ewe lamb from last year. A boy lamb, tup lamb from this year, but he's now castrated, so weather. And two tups. So the two on the outsides, the white one on the right and the one on the left with the big horn. They're the adult boys. Come on, you lot, come past me. Come on. They're really quick, the little diddy things. Come on, that's a girl, girl, babies. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait next week. I'll show you how tiny they are. Oops. So I just saw another little bit of their fleece. <laughs> this is their fleece. And for those of you that know anything at all about fleece, it's absolutely packed full of lanolin. There's so much more lanolin in this than in a normal sheep fleece, a domestic sheep fleece. I mean, they need it because they need it to, uh, um, to keep warm and dry because being a primitive sheep I mean we got them so that they can live out on the hill and us not have to worry about them so I don't have to shear them but they came a week before I'm shearing mine anyway but that's just timing <laughs> let's zoom out there we go they hide quite well. They're just stinging nettles, so they're not massive plants. But they hide behind them. I've already got bits of fleece. Yeah, it is light. Hi. Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gone half past ten at night. <laughs> There's the moon. We're so far north, um, I'm actually closer to the Arctic Circle than I am to the south of England. Which is funny, because in a few weeks I'm going to the south of England <laughs> and I'm driving down there. It'll be so weird. 
Hello! We have Mr. Mrs. Mad Chicken Lady. Um, they're called soways, they're not called deer sheep. Um, I just call them deer sheep because the first thing that any information ever says about soways is they look more like deer than sheep. So let's just go down. It's actually their faces. You're in Ayrshire? Oh, well I'm only up in Moray, Murray, Bamfordshire, whatever you want to call it. So just for you Dahlia, we'll go back and have a look at the little deer sheep. Yeah, it's their heads and uh, they behave like deer. They're so primitive looking. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's about as good a view as you get at the moment. So, yeah, they do look. Uh, sorry, Yvonne, I was just thinking of um, Aberdeenshire. I was thinking, that's right next to me. <laughs> no, they're not house sheep. I'll tell you what, though. To, I actually got to pick up, or I picked them all up today, and they are just so cute. Oh. <laughs> that last one to run down is last year's lamb. Uh, the white one we think is two. They're so sweet. No, 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 you don't have to run again. Yeah, that's the boys having a bit of a little scrap there so my plan in plan is even yeah sorry Yvonne my brain just went completely nuts will they calm down um no they're actually a lot calmer than I was expecting to be honest for the breed I'm gonna go outside the paddock and then we'll walk down the edge of the paddock uh yeah they're uh, an awful lot calmer than I thought just have a look at this Do you know what this is? This is called Usnia. Oh, hi Mary Beth, thank you. This is called Usnia. Usnia, U-S-N-E-A, I think it is, Usnia. And uh, you can actually use it as a herbal medicine. It's good if you've got a sore throat, that sort of thing. It grows like you wouldn't believe here. I could probably harvest enough for the whole of America. <sighs> Is that what tea is made from? Um, it can be. Uh, you can make tea from it. It's um, probably it's very good for you. And as I said, it's um, good for your throat. I'm going to go out of the paddock. So hopefully there'll be a little bit less stress and then I'll just walk down the side. So the plan is with these, now I've actually got them home, been able to have a look at them, um, you know, and sort of made some ideas about who's related to who and what and all of that. Um, you'll have to look on trees, Mary Beth. I'm told it only grows on the north base of trees, but I don't know how true that is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just picking up bits of fleece when I find them. It's so soft. So I should just get out. This is the pen I set up for them and they've already had their food in there today. And they were very happy to go in there and have food. And second time, we shut them in, grabbed hold of them, had a look at them all. Yeah, that's from the cross, crossbreed, the white one. So soft. I'll not collect that one. Oh dear. Look at the moon coming up. <laughs> uh, oh. You know what would help? If I open the gate, you're okay. Oh. 
The little ones are so cute. Yeah, my neighbour came over today and we were talking about them. We were having a look at them. And he said, I really want to get hold of them. I said, okay, let's get them in. So we got them in. So we're able to tell who's who. Roughly ages. You know, more like, um, you know, this one was this year. That one was last year. And that other one was the year before. Kind of deal. <laughs> so... But yeah, it is so light. What time is it? It's quarter to 11 at night. And I haven't got a, a flash on or a light or anything. This is just how it is. It's amazing. <laughs> Only about another week to go until the longest day. I thought we might do a live on the shortest night. And... Uh, do a live from as it goes dark to when the sun comes up not long so it's not fully dark here until about midnight if that and 3 a.m the sun's up again it's it's brighter than this at 3 a.m it's amazing or about 3 a.m i think what time i woke up do i get hill walkers passing no um well, I'm sure they do, but not through my farm. I don't have any footpaths. Here's the babies. Hi, little ones. How you doing? See if I can zoom in on them better. <laughs> Walking zombies. Um, no, people that uh, like to walk because we're in the highlands um, where I am because we're in Speyside on the whiskey trail and where the river Spey is which is I'm told amazing fishing um, see if I can go round without them running off so most of the people that come to this area are fishing or here for the whiskey so I might get a few hill staggerers occasionally Right, babies yeah these little things they're so tiny so what we're going to do is um i'm going to see if somebody would like to do a swap of the tops for a while the brown boy the top the dad is this one at the back here no don't run off one is called sean apparently only people in the uk will get why it's for having a uh, <laughs> yeah, it does, it does Yvonne. Uh, only, I think only UK people will un would understand why it's funny having a sheep called Sean. Um, from a cartoon. And the big top, the dad of them all, apparently his name's Steve. And I said, well, I can't have a Steve. Yeah, Sean the sheep. I said, I, I already have a Steve. I can't have another Steve. And you can't even say little Steve because the other Steve is a Shetland. <laughs> Oh, he's, you know, they're, they're quite small as well. So, I think at the moment he's been called Stevie, this one. So yeah, they're very sweet. Tiny, tiny little things. It'll be better when you can see their heads properly because you can't see the one that's already molted very well. Oh, you have Sean the sheep. Well, there you go, you get it. But... When, when they've molted, because I don't shear them, they molt this breed, like this one here, they do look more like deer. You see the difference in the width of the sheep between those that have got their fleece and those that haven't? You just saw her walking next to one of them, one of the other adults. But yeah, they are tiny. They're, I mean, I, I have small Jack Russell dogs, and I think the lambs are smaller than my dogs. So we're going to split the boys. I've got to speak to the vet tomorrow. Oh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for coming. Hey, Sharon. Um, so what's going to happen is this white boy here, because he's a crossbreed, uh, I will probably have him castrated. But I've got to speak to the vet to find out if they're willing to do such a small sheep at his age, because 
he's too old to be banded. So he'll have to have full on vet coming out, knock him out and all of that. But I don't know um, if they'll do it on on these sheep because they're so small. Their metabolism works different and they're quite resistant sometimes to uh, drugs. Yeah, talking about you, Sean. Yeah, they're so tiny. I know I keep saying it, but seriously, they're so tiny. That's the biggest one at the back. That's the big boy on the left. They, um, see this flock have lived together for two years. So I don't want to leave them together any much longer because we're going to end up with inbreeding. Yeah, they have horns. The boys have horns. I'm not sure about the... Who else has got horns? I haven't had a great look at them yet. No, the girls have got horns as well. The girls' horns are really quite small. The boys are quite big. What height are they? Um, the big males... I'm told can reach about 18 inches so foot and a half or no I think the females 18 inches the boys are up to 20 inches so not very big that's uh 20 inches isn't quite two foot they've got all these um branches in here to give them something to rub against that's what I've just been able to get some of their fleece off because you don't shear these ones they molt themselves yeah they are absolutely tiny well i'm zoomed in you can zoom out does that help <laughs> small sheep far away <laughs> but they're they're really unusual they're they look so tiny you just want to pick them up and hug them but you can't. <laughs> uh, the lambs, I'd say, are actually about the size of a cat. Uh, hi, Dave. Yes, I leave horns on my sheep. Um, I don't like um, taking horns off. It's just my personal preference. I've seen it done wrong. I've seen it done right, but go wrong as well. Um, and I don't want to do it. So, you know, people say, will they get caught in the fencing? Well, Billy's got horns. He got it caught in the fencing twice. But by the second time, he figured out how to get out without help. So, you know. Uh, Donna, historically, well, they were wild. Um, their meat is apparently very, very good. It's very low in cholesterol. It's very good meat. There's just not a lot of it. But they're from sort of the islands, you know, the west of Scotland, northwest and up that sort of way. Um, lived in very, very bad climates. I um, mean, St Kilda, which is where they were moved to. Uh, you could only access St Kilda by ferry and only for three months of the year. The other nine months, it was blocked off. The weather was too bad. The storms were too bad. But that's where they... Yeah, exactly. Very tough. That's where they're... They're, they're not originally from St Kilda. They're originally from Soe, but they were moved to St Kilda when people left Soe because it was so <laughs> inhospitable. And uh, then people in St Kilda went, uh, oh, actually, this is not a fun life. So they asked for evacuation, actually, and they were evacuated. Um, yeah, so if you ever want to look at the history of a very interesting island, look up St Kilda, so S-T dot, Kilda is K-I-L-D-A. I think I can hear a sheep in the forest. I don't think I've lost any. Anybody counted? Do I still have seven? I can literally hear 
a sheep calling from there, at the back over there. I may have to go for a quick drive in the forest, um, make sure there's no random sheep up there. I didn't actually count how many sheep I've got here, I should have seven. <sighs> How many of you have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, if there is a sheep in there, it's not one of mine. So that's good. <sighs> so these guys will eventually go out onto the hill farm part of the land, which is, you know, when I show the scrubby bit and you've got all the forest behind it at the far, on the far side. Um, that's the hill farm, what we call the hill farm land. It's really, really scrubby. And these guys, they're quite interesting because most sheep don't choose to eat weeds. Whereas these guys were tucking into the weeds like they were the best thing on the planet. So I'm quite happy about that. So I guess they're more like goats in that way. So at some point I might, uh, what I might do in the winters is, oh no, there's no point having them in. Uh, these guys won't even notice the winter up here. Um, we're going to build them a little house, a little hut up on the hill. Possibly out of the stones that are out there. So we might just build them you know, some really nice little um, little stone, stone shelter. Which is what they have on St Kilda for them. Hello! SH how many so yeah these are little sewe sheep it's getting a bit dark now guys probably not going to see very well they're getting better nice to see you Yvonne hope to see you again soon bye Anyway, guys, as you can see, it's getting a bit dark. Can I cross them with goats? Um, in theory, yeah. But it's very difficult to get across the moon. I mean, it is 11 o'clock at night and I still haven't got any light on. Um, it's very, very difficult to get across between a sheep and a goat anyway at the best of times so. so yes in theory you can it does happen don't generally last very long um if it's hi oh bats as well i'm gonna leave you guys to go to bed that's the big boy that one there Yeah, it's great, isn't it, Sharon? I've never known it. Never known light at this time of night before. So, I'm going to leave you little guys to it. See? Somebody has just scratched a huge clump of fleece out there, look. <laughs> I want to go get it. I'll get it tomorrow. So, I'm going to go and investigate everybody and see... If I can find a sheep in the woods there. Lovely. Speak to you soon, Mary. I'm popping off now anyway. So there's the new little sheep is. There's the moon. And uh, 11 o'clock at night. There's how light it is. I will catch you all soon. <laughs>